Yeah, I think I like to work with men. Maybe not Emily, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Least favorite one. Sayings. Yeah. You say Sayings is my least favorite one. Yeah. He's my least favorite too. I'm just kidding. This is Blind, a brand strategy design consultancy based in Santa Monica, California. Since 1995, Blind has used the power of design to help diverse clients reach their customers and stand out in the marketplace. In this series, you'll get a rare glimpse behind closed doors and see the process of rebranding a company from start to finish. This is Building a Brand. On our last episode, Blind's team of designers for this project were given the creative brief by Matthew and Ben. Sang, Emily, and Min then went about researching elements based on the creative exercises done in the discovery session. After having done that, the designers came back to present their concepts and get feedback before diving deep into creating their individual stylescapes. Feedback in hand, the designers went to work. What is a stylescape? Stylescapes are collections of images, textures, typography that we curate in order to communicate a look and feel. You can think of stylescapes like mood boards, just taken one step further. With stylescapes, we arrange them in a way that makes sense and we also edit each individual item that goes on here so that we're communicating a single visual idea. Stylescapes are like setting the broad compass direction for the journey that we're gonna to take together. Are we gonna to go north, south, east, west? Setting that direction from the beginning, make sure that we're all on the same path. The designers created their first draft of stylescapes that explore the new brand direction for Hamilton Family Brewery. Emily and Sang focused on creating a look for the aspirational customer, Kurt, while Min focused on designing for their primary customer, Jessica. Up first is Emily. She will present two stylescapes. Her first direction uses ornamental flourishes to emphasize the heritage and specialized qualities of the Hamilton brand. Emily's second direction also focuses on heritage, but this time uses utilitarian design elements for an unrefined look. Ben and Matthew's feedback will push Emily to increase the contrast between elements. Um, one other thing that I'm looking at right now, we have a lot of very different type samples. And I'm wondering, and I'm posing this to the group, do we want to keep it that, do we want to keep that range? Or do we want to tighten it up? What's your thought, Emily? Mm, probably not as um, wide as what I have right now, but I don't think we should just stick with one. Mm -hmm. I think we should have a little bit variety, but I do think I have a little bit too much. There's like five different kinds of style going on. The hardest thing for me, I would say, would be their short time frame. I think we had critique sessions every day since we started the Stylescape. Usually we work on one Stylescape in a whole week, and we don't do critique sessions until maybe three or four days after. But for this project, we've done it every single day. Next is Sang. His approach is to create a look that focuses on maker culture, by emphasizing packaging details and craftsmanship. However, he may have missed the mark from the direction he was given in the creative brief. I really liked on your examples, all the shields that you pulled. I'm only seeing that in one spot. And I think that that's a really powerful thing, but the execution there I feel like is kind of meh. You had some really great examples of crests and shields that were almost back printed, like a background color, like the Helen thing. And I'd like to see those come back around. And then I'm also missing the grids, the boxes, all that kind of stuff that we talked about in the utilitarian theme. So that's what I'm missing here. The first meeting, I think, Ben and Matthew uh, reacted really positively on the packaging idea. When I started the first Stylescape, I was tunnel visioning on that idea. I liked it too, and that's where the, like the, um, when it started to become like a problem because even before I had a solid idea, I already picked one like look and feel, and I was trying to design around that. When I saw like what I did that day, I was like, okay, this is okay. Like I was just pushing the idea that wasn't working. 
it took like a day or two to realize that, that it's not gonna work. So I completely scrapped that idea. Sometimes it's easier to redo it than fix what you already had. Our last designer is Min. Her direction focuses on Jessica, the primary customer. Her approach is a colorful use of stamps and woodcut illustrations. However, Ben and Matthew feel like the approach is too feminine and may deter male customers. It's too clean. It doesn't give me enough history and I'm missing that uh, raw feeling. They responded to a couple of like outdoorsy themes in the stylescapes that we showed them in the discovery session. And I think we went too far that way. After a review of the initial brand directions, the designers took the feedback given to them to refine their ideas. With a day of course correction, Ben and Matthew take another look at the updates and work with the design team to make final tweaks. So I completely kind of scrapped the ones I did. Good idea. Yesterday. Yeah. I was struggling <laughs> and I was like not vibing and I was just, just trying to put stuff together. It didn't work. Mm -hmm. so I did a fresh start. Mm -hmm. And I think what you guys react was like um, the, the crest and like simple, you know, the label design. Mm -hmm. So I went, like, I found some more reference and more examples and I think it has more clear concept than before. Mm -hmm. Like the colors, are, I like the colors, first of all, man. it just looks more fresh and more uh, unified. Mm -hmm. So I just want to hear your guys' ideas. Yeah, I think it looks a lot more solid. I like that you're starting to use the crest or badge, right? This little mm -hmm. shield thing. I could see that replicated throughout. I really like the colors quite a bit. It's interesting because you have this really bold uh, red against the black. Mm -hmm. And that's nice. I love that. But then just to soften that out, you have this secondary light blue color, yeah. which is super helpful. It softens it up just enough, right? Because I can see little accents of blue in there. Mm -hmm. That's very, very nice. And I think what's, I try to find what's unique about these the, like vintage label design. Mm -hmm. and I think they have a mixture of different typography. Mm -hmm. and you can see like they have this um, condensed uh, type. Mm -hmm. and they have this cur curve. And they all have like a couple different style of type, but they are all unified and work together. I think that's why it, it works well mm -hmm. on those designs. I'm in love with the colors. I just, I freaking love it. And this, the, the crest shapes are great. Um, my only thing is this area right here just feels unresolved. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. I think it kind of contrasts a little bit with the cream, mm -hmm. the two yeah. white backgrounds. Mm -hmm. That's my only issue with this. Yeah, I think overall the feeling is, is great. I, I think you resolved a lot of issues we're having. Mm -hmm. I don't know how strong this Buckeye thing is working for us. Like, I like that type. Mm -hmm. I even kind of like the illustration, but I don't know what, how we would apply that. You know what I mean? Like, is that meant to be a label or a poster from the label? I wonder if the only thing, maybe it's just the one color that feels like it's, it's a little too subdued for me. Like, uh, I don't know. I feel like that section, since it's taking up so much real estate, I want it to work a little bit harder for, for okay. us. Yeah. yeah. Um, so maybe if we do show that, then we might want to take up half of the space with something else. Mm, okay. Just to, maybe it's the photography stuff that uh, Ben is saying, or like some textures, something else to broaden a little bit more of how this would apply okay. across things. Because we got some good either label or typography and graphic examples, which is nice here. A little bit on the packaging, which is nice. This one, you know, it's just like, I, I just don't know how we would apply that. And okay. It takes up so much room. Yeah. So yeah. let's just make the space work for us. When we look at the stylescapes from the designers, we gotta make sure that there's a good visual balance and a good visual hierarchy. One of the things that typically drives the hierarchy and rhythm on there is contrast. So when we look at different areas of the stylescape, if it feels very splotchy or, or weighted to one side, then we feel like it's unbalanced. So what we try to do as work with them is to create a nice visual rhythm where the whole thing flows from left to right and you have a nice balance on both the left side and the right side. So sometimes the designers will make uh, little decisions on specific elements, but forget to zoom out and take a look at the whole thing. That's where we can come in with fresh eyes and say, you know what, this feels a little unbalanced. I see why you made that decision, but for the overall view, 
it's, it's feeling a little off. Emily, how are we doing on this? Um, I took the notes that you guys gave last time and applied it to here. I did a little um, label thing on the bottles. Mm -hmm. And then I kind of unified all the colors together with the little pop of yellow thing here and there. Mm -hmm. One of the notes was to show a little bit of gold or silver. Mm -hmm. So I just reversed this color. Mm -hmm. It's like a gold foil. Mm -hmm. Found a picture with like some reclaimed wood. Mm -hmm. There's like um, also typography chalk drawings where you can incorporate the chalk and the wood together. Mm -hmm. So that's how I would imagine maybe their beer tasting room would look like. Mm -hmm. Like this could be the wheat or something. The, the hops, yeah. yeah. I think that interior shot is spot on. I really like that. Um, the rest of it, can we see the, the one that we saw yesterday? I think I'm missing the intensity of this one. And I think it is because this is reversed. Is it because it's too bright? Yeah. The background is on the way. Um, so I'm sad that that's gone. Mm -hmm. And then that feels a little bit less strong. And then I'm still not a fan of the bonjour. Yeah, because it was too chalkboard-like, right? It's too much of that versus a lot of these where it felt a little bit tighter. Uh, I think also our letterhead, like that's not doing a whole lot for me. I, yeah, I feel like we should just lose that. It, it's not helping me understand the brand a little bit more. Right. I would because like this is so spot on, and even before you showed that, I was like, "Whoa, we got very white here as far as mm -hmm. amount of color." What I would do is like maybe even take this photo here on the right side. Mm -hmm. it's, it's some of these signs, like those could be blue, right? Like the, just bring a little bit over of this stuff over here, and then bring some of this texture mm -hmm. over here. So I feel like. If you have something in this room where there's a pop of color, something on the far left where there's just a little, another pop of color, I think it will help balance that out. And it doesn't have to be just yellow and orange. Like you could maybe explore a little bit of something like more red potentially. Cause like you, you're starting to do that here. And I think that would actually fit into this color palette. Sweet. Thanks. Oh, another one. Oh, that's right. Still figuring out this section. Mm-hmm. So really weird. <laughs> it's kind of, it has that rustic feel. I feel like this um, kind of goes with rustic, but with like pops of color. Mm -hmm. So that's how I imagined the interior to be. And then also I used um, these textures. Yeah, I like those a lot. Mm -hmm. I think it matches more with the one that I had last week. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would say for the environment, I like that a lot. I like some of the elements in there. I'm missing some of that. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if in there, like on that wall, be cool to just get a hint of like a big graphic if it's like a C or some, some kind mm -hmm. of shape in there just That's stamped on the wall. Uh, what you could do, I don't know if this would work or not, but they have these big stainless steel tanks and they're not really a shiny stainless steel so there's not a lot of contrast in it but it's more of like a matte. Mm -hmm. um, I'm wondering if you could pull in a close-up texture of that stainless here in the background, move these logos down and then put like just enough of the like the big handle, kind of like how you see here, mm -hmm. um, enough to just put an accent in there. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that would totally change it or not, but it may be a texture that would fit this kind of thing. Cool. All right, sweet. Thanks. Usually we do three stylescapes of mild, medium, and um, spicy, but this time we have five different stylescapes. I think they're either gonna choose the one that I'm doing or Sang's doing. I think my stylescape, um, the fancy ornamental one and uh, Sang's crest one um, tend to be on the milder side and I think those have a good chance of being chosen. Uh, what, what's uh, updated since yesterday? Because I know we gave you some feedback. Uh, yeah, previously I uh, had the feedback that uh, it was like a little feminine, mm -hmm. too light in terms of color. Mm -hmm. I kind of reversed the color palette to make more solid mm -hmm. and more like more unisex. Mm -hmm. yeah. Great. And try to balance the page more throughout the color treatment over here. I added some textures. Oh yeah, I changed the user profile. Mm -hmm. So I think I remember. I remember that while you guys saw this could go more educational direction. Mm -hmm. I looked at the badges from the... Boy Scouts? Yeah, Boy Scouts mm -hmm. and Girl Scouts. 
I think my primary concerns with this have are, are gone. They've all been addressed. So the issues that I had yesterday, like you said, it was I, I felt like it was too much white. It was too feminine, mostly because there was a lot of this like light turquoise color and a lot of white. So all of that has been filled in with some nice textures. You've rebalanced with a lot of these bolder blue and oranges, which are complementary. So that's very nice. Actually, I think the whole color palette is really nice because you have this orange and then across from it, you have a little bit of the greenish and a little bit of the blue. So that's a really nice color palette there. From Hamilton, right? I'm like good with this thing. It, it, I think it's great. My main issue is the wood texture there. Mm -hmm. I think that it's kind of crossed the line into uh, 90s kind of Ikea furniture. So let's crack open chrome real quick and just do a Google search for sanded birch ply. So you can see how the, the, the grain is just a little bit different. It's a mm -hmm. little bit more industrial. It kind of looks a little bit more DIY. Whereas this kind of looks like it's been oiled. Uh, the tone is just a little bit off for me. Right, it's like a wood floor. Yep. Right, where this one could be any surface or this one could be propped up. And then my other thing, it, I think that the color on the left is great, but I don't really, miss, I don't really like the texture of the wood showing through there. I feel like it kind of should be solid. I don't have a preference either way. These badges are cool at the top. I'm also not 100% sold on the barrel. The illustration. Yeah, it just doesn't fit in with the other stuff my mind it kind of feels a little clip arty to me versus the other ones even though they're in the same very in the same style since they're less detailed and a little bit more chunky those feel a little bit more dated to me but again I'm I'm like totally nit nitpicking no no I, I I I agree it's there's a cleanliness to that that's like too it's too sharp relative so, to some of the other things that have a little bit more texture, even in the, the difference in the, the line weights. I, I mean, I think we're really close here. I don't think we really have to do much else. I think if you swap out that wood texture and then see how we can make this less clean as far as a vector graphic goes and just add a little texture to that, I think this is good enough to, to discuss. At this point, Min has a second stylescape to present. This is a very different direction based on some of the retro inspiration that was pulled together in the initial research phase. Although retro was not something the creative directors or the clients were seeking out, Singh, Emily, and Min saw promise in some of the research elements and decided to explore it on their own time. Their collaboration has resulted in the group's wildcard stylescape, a long shot that the client may either love or hate. So you picked up the uh the hand-painted direction that Emily and Singh were collaborating on yesterday. Yeah. And this looks solid. I love mm -hmm. all the solid color bands. It's very bold. This, I think this is gonna be something that they're not gonna expect when we go t talk to them. So this is one of those ones where I feel like we should present this one last. Cause I feel like they're gonna fall in love with one of the other three or four <laughs> that we have going on. <laughs> and then they're gonna come to this and be like, oh, I thought my mind was set until I saw this one. Yeah, they're either going to love this or the, the, it's going to seal the deal for the other one. <laughs> right, because it's so different. It's so different. Uh, no. Cool. I mean, I don't think really anything has to be done to this. I, I like that you included this one photo of somebody actually hand painting one of the signs because that would be such a great accent in their place. If they go this direction, just getting some um, sign painters to go into their space and then put up all these murals are really big type. It'd be so beautiful. And then we could design the packaging that feels like it's a reflection of that. Good job, guys. Cool, yeah, really good work. So I think minor tweaks across the board, and then we'll be ready to present this to client. I'll keep this simple. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> How will it make you feel personally if the client chooses your stylescape? Oh, it's like... They don't really have to choose mine, but uh, yeah, it'll be, it'll be nice if they choose mine. But I like everything we did. After Matthew and Ben have checked in with the designers, they spend some time considering what still needs to be done before they present to Josh and Kristen at the brewery. I might even want to look at if we need to present all the directions or if it's something that we edit out. Because there's two that are very close to this maker culture thing, which is mm -hmm. Um, Emily's and Min's, like they both have a little bit of overlap there. Mm -hmm. They're different. Are they different enough that we should give the client that many choices? I, that's the thing that I'm only worried about. Josh's style is more the ornate stuff. 
Um, but our ornate stuff is not as masculine as I think that he chases. So I think that there's going to be a little bit of conflict there. Um, but I do think that he's going to be drawn to the ornate version or sings with the crests and the red and black um, because he's a masculine dude. That's, that's my gut feeling. So if you had to pick one, which one would it be? Sings direction? I think sings, yeah. That's your betting on that horse? Yeah. I don't want it to be that, though. <laughs> right. <laughs> I want it to be the sign painterly Right. Thing. I'm thinking, man, this is a tough one. My gut is telling me they're going to pick one of Emily's, but I want the, it to be the hand-painted direction because <laughs> it's just so unexpected and very bold. So I think that will be our challenge because there's what is expected versus something that's unexpected for the market because a big thing is how does their branding and packaging stand out in this mm -hmm. larger market? How does it stand out in the retail shelves? Yep. And when we look at that, that direction specifically, the hand-painted side direction, it mm -hmm. looks so bold and different. Yeah. So yeah, it'll pop off the shelves. Yeah. We just got to make sure that that's aligned with their vision for the overall brand. Right. And that we got it right. And we're not just, <laughs> we're not just uh, making decisions for ourselves. Mm -hmm. We've got to make sure they're aligned with that. Yeah. At this point, a few days have elapsed, and the designers have dialed in their stylescapes. Because Blind does business with clients all over the world, we typically present stylescapes in a digital conference. Because Hamilton is so close, though, Matthew and Ben decide to print out the stylescapes and drive out to Rancho Cucamonga to present them in person. I like the size a lot, right? Yeah. I don't know why, but I imagined it to be like, like, like this size. <laughs> Oh yeah, me too, right? Yeah. But the, if you look at the proportions, they're actually yeah. very long. Yeah. Ooh, so cute! Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> look, these are little em stylescapes. Emily's just talking about her her stylescapes. No. Oh, like Chris hasn't size. seen any of them. So which which is your favorite one, Chris? What is this? This is for Hamilton, the brewery. Oh, you guys decided to print it out? Yeah, because we're gonna go there tomorrow and present it to the client. Chris Doe, the founder of Blind, he is the also the executive creative director here and he stays pretty hands-off on projects sometimes he'll come in to help do the strategy or work with some of our higher level clients but for most of the time he stays pretty hands-off and he lets us creative directors do what we do best it looks pretty dope yeah but which one's the best yeah, you gotta do the best okay <laughs> I, I'll, I'll tell you it's like survivor <laughs> losers it's fine <laughs> In this particular case with Hamilton Family Brewery, I just wanted his fresh perspective. He's a guy who has impeccable taste, can, has a good eagle eye for details if something looks wrong, and he's somebody who will question logic to no end. I think for me, um, there are parts and pieces that I like more than others, but um, if I had to just pick based on one, I'd probably pick one of these two. Cool. So you thought Matthew? I really like this type, but it's, it doesn't seem to be bringing it all together on this side. <laughs> Matt, which was your Chris Doe? This one. Because Chris it? slowed down on this one. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think this is more in like he his, like, there's his style There's a lot more things. typographic elements and graphic patterns. Like this is mostly typographically driven, right? Mm -hmm. So if you look at the palette, what are we going to pull from that? <laughs> That's where the conflict is and where I can see an ability to mix and match things that all feel cohesive and you can take this in a lot of different directions. Mm -hmm. There's a nice, nice like um, crest or chevron or whatever that's called, shield, emblems, that heraldry thing that's going on, the lumberjack thing with the saw and that kind of typeface that seems to work with um, mills. Mm -hmm. that kind of vibe, the diamond shape, mixing the typefaces. I also picked this one because you're introducing some texture. Mm -hmm. Burlap back feels really good. Um, and the, this kind of typography where you're using the grid, the line work, uh, these kind of camp looking badges look really cool. The mixture of script and, and sans serif typefaces with the arc and the symbols, that feels really good. I like the thinking here where mm -hmm. there's a design that pulls across mm -hmm. or it's designed to rotate or whatever that, that is. So it seems like there's a real system. Okay. I mean, there's well, parts and pieces about the things I like, and I think you guys need to continue to think about how does this extend all the way out. Mm -hmm. For this one, I really like this area right here. Mm -hmm. I like the label over labels. I've always loved that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. I like the giant monograms. Those feel really good. Mm -hmm. So I think if you had a variety of typography, some 2D, some 3D, some textures, 
that makes it feel really complete. And I can say, just run with that, make it. Chris is an INTJ on the Myers-Briggs scale. What does that mean? That means he's a constant improver. So no matter how good something is, here's other, he, he always has a way to make it better. <laughs> so he'll never be happy. On the next episode of Building a Brand, Ben and Matthew take a tense car ride to Rancho Cucamonga to present the stylescapes in person. While they have faith in the directions the designers have gone, predicting how the client will react to the work is never an exact science. Will the clients fall in love with a particular direction, or will they send Matthew and Ben back home to the drawing board? Stay tuned for the next episode of Building a Brand. I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you have a question about stylescapes, leave us a question in the comments below. Also, if you want to learn more about the Stylescapes process, check out the links in the description we provided for you. As always, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe because it really helps us out. We'll see you on the next episode of Building a Brand.